Lions have some visual superpowers that make them excellent hunters. I'll break down how a lion's vision is both better and worse than ours in different ways, why their pupils aren't slit-shaped like your house cats, and why lions don't attack people on safaris even though they're vicious predators. Lion's night vision is about six times better than ours. They have a reflective layer of tissue behind their retinas called a tapedum. It's a retro reflector, meaning that light that hits it bounces back in the exact direction it came from. Similar technology is what makes stop signs easier to see at night, and house cats have one of these too that make their eyes glow in the dark a little bit. For lions, their tapedum bounces light back through their retinas a second time, making their eyes way more sensitive to low light. Lions also have more rod cells than cone cells in their retinas. Rods give you low light vision in black and white, while cones give you your color vision and help you see when it's lighter out. Because lions have fewer cones than humans do, they see the world in more muted colors. They also only have two different types of cones instead of three like us, so lions are colorblind. Lions are most sensitive to blue and green, but they struggle to see and distinguish red, orange, and brown. One of lion's visual superpowers is how insanely good they are at detecting motion, letting them easily spot prey hidden in grass. This has to do with the way their brains process what their eyes pick up, instead of the anatomy of their eyes themselves. But this motion detecting superpower has a downside. Lions are pretty bad at spotting things that aren't moving. The way their brains fixate on motion gives prey a chance to escape with their lives if they just stay super still. Unfortunately for the sneaky prey though, lions have a good sense of smell too. You're just probably better off staying still and hoping the lion finds some new prey instead of trying to outrun a lion, since they can run up to 50 miles per hour. Like humans, lions have good depth perception because of their forward-facing eyes and binocular vision, which just means that the fields of view of their eyes overlap. A lot of predators have eyes like this so they can better track something specific, while prey animals are more likely to have eyes on the sides of their head, so they can see more around them and better spot predators sneaking up on them. Surprisingly, lions have blurrier vision than us. They have 2060 to 2070 vision, meaning that from 20 feet away from something, they only see the level of detail that the average person would see from 60 feet or 70 feet away. Lions adapted to prioritize motion detection and low light vision instead of higher resolution like humans. But if lions are just big cats, why do they have round pupils while house cats have slit shaped pupils? There are two main differences between Simba and Garfield. House cats hunt prey that's a lot smaller than them, like mice, while lions often hunt comparatively large prey. Slit-shaped pupils, like cats, house cats, enhance your depth perception and let you better lock in on really small prey, and lions just don't really need that. Also, lions definitely hunt at night, we talked about their great night vision, but they're also a lot more active during the day than house cats naturally are with lions also hunting when it's light out. Round pupils provide a better balance of seeing both well at day and at night, while house cats evolve to be more nocturnal than lions. Lions pupils dilate a lot though, letting them adjust their light sensitivity between day and night. And finally, why don't lions attack safari vehicles that cross their path? It's just bringing a buffet platter of lots of food to them but they see cars full of people as one single large beast, especially when everybody inside the car stays relatively still. The safari guides and drivers are also trained to not provoke lions by avoiding sudden movements, making loud noises, or getting too close to them. And in lots of safari areas, lions and all the other animals there are pretty used to cars and just don't see them as a threat but I definitely wouldn't recommend hopping out of the safari car and running up to Mufasa by yourself. What other animals would you like me to cover in this series?